this is Absolute Genius. So sit down, buckle up, and get ready for takeoff. Each show will introduce you to a different genius. An amazing person who had a genius idea which shaped the world. And they will inspire us to come up with our own genius idea at the end of each show. But will it be any good? Will it be any good? It'll be absolute genius. On today's show, we introduce you to a visionary genius and bring one of his inventions to life. It's going to be big, it's going to be bold, and it's going to be a blast. Today, we introduce you to a man that had not one... Not two. ..but hundreds of genius ideas that were hundreds of years ahead of their time, like the futuristic fly machine. Yeah, boots that enabled you to walk on water, but you and I know him better as a painter. Mm, but not any old painter. This guy painted one of the most famous pictures the world has ever seen. The Mona Lisa. Come on over here and please meet Leonardo. Da Vinci. Ciao, de Candom. <laughs> yeah, inspired by his genius ideas, we're going to be creating our own genius idea later on in the show when we bring one of his inventions to life. But first, let's find out a little bit more about the man himself. Leonardo da Vinci was born in 1452 near the town of Vinci in Italy. His name actually means Leonardo of Vinci. Back then, there was no TV and no internet. In fact, the world was lit by candles. There were books, but Da Vinci didn't have time for books. The real world was his classroom, and nature was his inspiration. So this was a time before even cars were invented. But Da Vinci, he wanted to fly. Yeah, he was absolutely obsessed with the idea of man flying. So he would sit and watch other things that could fly, and then try and work out how they did it. He looked at birds and he drew them, because he wanted to find out how their wings worked. Then he used what he learned to to design a flying machine. Demonstrate. OK, I'll go and grab me bits. Yeah. Uh. Right, that's it. Choey, now. <laughs> He's brilliant! <laughs> Legs are a bit... Far apart. I haven't finished yet. Oh. Anyway, it doesn't matter, does it? Because did you know that Da Vinci had a reputation for not finishing stuff? I didn't think you did. So you better listen to five more of our weird Da Vinci facts. The genius top five. Five, Da Vinci never went to school. So no school dinners, no school uniform, and no homework. Shame, really. He would have been great in art. Da Vinci often wrote backwards using mirror writing. Some think that it was a secret code so nobody could pinch his ideas. And I just think he liked looking at himself in the mirror. Oh, I'm gorgeous. Three! Da Vinci was a vegetarian. Apparently, he loved animals so much, he used to buy caged birds just to set them free. Two! Da Vinci invented the pizza after accidentally sitting on his cheese and tomato sandwich. Only joking! I just made that one up! And at one, Da Vinci was a musical genius. Not only did he invent some musical instruments, he also played them, loads of them. Yes, he certainly had the X Factor. Congratulations, you're through to the next era. <laughs> so it's fair to say that Da Vinci was pretty good at art. Actually, he was particularly good at painting people, and this didn't come about by chance. He studied the human body better than anyone else had done before him, which is why... We're here. So, before we bring one of Da Vinci's inventions to life, let's tell you one more thing about him that'll show you how committed he was to his cause. And this one's pretty full on. Now, we all know that underneath the skin is a pretty complex bit of kit. You know, you've got arteries, veins, muscle, bone, organs, all sorts. You know, like the gory pictures you'll have seen in biology books of human bodies insides? Like this one. 
But how did Da Vinci know what was under the skin? You see, back in Da Vinci's time, surgeons were allowed access to the bodies of dead criminals for medical research. Artists and students were allowed to join in, so Da Vinci must have spent many a happy night cutting bodies up and drawing them. And it goes without saying, don't try this at home. Can we turn the spooky music off, please? Thank you. Really, you're so scary. Derek's dropped his guts. So we've learned that Da Vinci was awesome at drawing and painting, but he also fancied himself as a bit of an inventor. He came up with groundbreaking ideas, like a suit that would let you walk on the bottom of the ocean to a machine that would let you fly like a bird in the sky. And how do we know all this? Because Leonardo left behind thousands of pages of notes in his secretive journals. Da Vinci's genius idea was to invent stuff that was centuries ahead of its time. His secret journals were packed full of incredible designs. There were flying machines, a parachute, a robotic knight, and even a tank. Check me out. I'm going to blow you up from the 16th century. Loads to think about. So which genius idea are we going to bring to life at the end of today's show? I know. Well, the big problem is there's tons in here to choose from. Yeah, if only Fran was here, our resident genius scientist, to help us a bit. This is Fran. She just loves experimenting. Ah! Ah! To help explain the ideas of our geniuses. And she's sure to pop up just when you really need her. Hello. Right. So which one's your favourite idea so far? Got to say, instantly, I think the robotic knife. It does look quite awesome, doesn't no, it? No, I, I don't understand that, though, because that'll probably need power, won't it? And there was no batteries electricity in those days. Well, it worked, it worked a bit differently, and this picture doesn't quite show it. Come with me, and I'll explain. So, we know that Leonardo was obsessed with machines, but also obsessed with the human body and what was underneath the skin. So, what he did is he combined his love of human bodies with his love of machines and made a robotic knight. And how did it work? The way it worked was, if we look here, you can see that just by pulling different bits of string, you can make ah, cool. parts of the body yeah. move like a machine. Is this a, is this a Leonardo or a Fram? This is a, this is a Fram. Oh, nice. No, okay. But Leonardo did it on the night, like we were saying, and he had, like, a, instead of string, he had rope, and he had a series of pulleys, and he could make, like, the arms move, make the robot sit down and stand up. Well, I mean, the idea of a, a robotic knight is quite genius, really, but I think our genius idea could be even bigger and better. Come on, Fran, let's... Andy, you can go. Oh. It was time to aim a bit higher. I like the look of the parachute. It does look good, doesn't it? Yeah, it, yeah. it looks OK. What's so amazing about a parachute, though? Well, in Leonardo's time, it was more than 500 years ago, and no-one had ever flown before. There were no planes, there were no helicopters, so everything is amazing about this idea. So how would he know that would work, then? He, he didn't. He had no idea. He might not have even built a model of it, but he was confident that it would work because he based all of his theories on nature. So he would have watched things like leaves falling off a tree. And it's the same thing, really, because when an object's falling, it's not falling through nothing, it's falling through air. And that air pushes up against the object and makes it fall slower. So with a parachute, you've got a massive area for the air to push against. So the air pushes against it a lot and makes the parachute and the man fall much slower. So to test Fran's theory, we headed off to a nearby tower. Watch your head, Dick. So you've made us walk up 205 steps to the top of this very windy tower. What for? Because what we've got here is we've got a small version oh. of Leonardo's parachute. Oh. Right, and it's the same uh, same shape as the plans? Yeah, 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 exactly Pyramid. like what Leonardo drew. Right. And we've also got a small version of a person that's going to be thrown off with the parachute. Right. Are you ready for this? Yes. It's a crash test dummy. Ah, oh, there you go. Life size. Oh, shut up. Uh, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> look at that. Look at the slap head on him, yeah? Quite accurate. All right, so what are we hoping to achieve from this? What we're going to do is throw it off the tower, yes. and hopefully Mini Dom will fall safely to the ground. Gracefully, very good. Uh, don't forget, if this works, it's all good, then uh, you and I are going to be replicating this. We're going to do the next stage and supersize it and maybe jump out of an aeroplane or yeah. something. Yeah. Forgot, forgot about that bit. Yes. Yeah. Um, okay. Right then, talk to friend. Yeah. Have okay. a countdown. Three, Three, two, one, go. Go on, Dom! Hey, that way! So Diddy Dom got off to a bad start. And then things got even worse. Ouch! Oh, his head put in the head put in the tower. But just when it looked like it was all over, the parachute filled with air and gave Diddy me a nice soft landing. Hey, not bad. 
Well, that actually went quite well. Yeah, it did. Uh, little Donald Mann, did you find it? Great. What about you, Fran? <laughs> I was quite impressed with it. It was spiralling down and the air was catching in it and it was quite a gentle landing. But it did hit the tower. Yeah, it did, yeah. Mm. Yeah, well, I suppose the big question is now, now we've seen that it works, is that do we supersize it and do a large-scale mm. version of that at the end of the show? Mm. Let's tell it's... Fran oh. now I'm scared of heights. I mean, that oh. was fine because there's walls and, you know, business, but jumping out of a plane. I'm not no. jumping out of no, no plane. No. He can't, he can't, yeah. To be honest, as well... <laughs> <laughs> I don't really fancy ending up looking like that, so, uh, uh, no. Back to the drawing board. So, our attempt at Da Vinci's parachute didn't go down too well, but there was one invention that surely couldn't fail. What about if we go big with the tank? I do like this tank, and like most of Leonardo's ideas, this was really revolutionary. No one had ever seen anything like it before. Looks a little bit like a tortoise. It's funny you should say that, because Leonardo was inspired by nature, and it does look a bit like a tortoise shell. Have you got a model of it? I haven't, but I do know somewhere you can go to find out all about tanks. Oh, really? And he was from Italy, wasn't he? OK, yeah, so what? Yeah. Florence, Rome, Milan? Dorset. I love Dorset! Come on. Come on! Dorset, with its stunning coastline and incredible cliffs, has been an inspiration to artists and writers for centuries. Luckily for us, it also has a tank museum. But not any old tank museum, because this place has got the biggest collection of tanks in the world. It was time to get inspired. It was time to get serious. 98, 99. One, two. <laughs> Left on our own, we weren't getting anywhere with our research. We needed a man with a beard who knew a lot about tanks. Meet tank genius and museum curator David Willey. What do we need to know if we're thinking about building a tank? Tanks tend to be three main things. They're about firepower, that's a gun, something to attack with. They're about protection. So that's your armour plate or whatever it is you're going to put on your vehicle so that you're actually protected inside it. And it's also about mobility. It's how you're going to get that vehicle to where you want to actually fight. So would you say Da Vinci's designs would have worked? Well, he's got the three principles there, hasn't he? He's got protection on the outside, he's got a cannon for firepower. The only one that might be a bit of a doubt is the mobility because it's human power trying to manoeuvre a big vehicle along. Yeah. So that may be one of the issues you might have to have a look at. So David had given us the theory, but now it was time to see it in practice. And where better to learn about firepower, protection and mobility than on board a real-life tank? This is an M4 Sherman tank. It weighs 32 tonnes, has a top speed of 24 miles per hour and can take out an enemy tank at over 1,000 metres. It's not something you'd mess with. The noise was a noisy noise. The Sherman was so loud, it made lots of noise. It wasn't the smoothest of rides, but it was definitely mobile. Fist pump coming up. having a good time too. It was all good research for our Da Vinci tank. And after a few more laps of bombing around in the Sherman, I was convinced that making a tank was the way forward. That was absolutely mind-blowing. And for me personally, it sealed the deal that we are now going to make our version of Da Vinci's tank. And to be honest, I was really surprised as well that being in a tank, it was actually a really nice, steady, stable and quite a clean journey. I mean, look, no dirt on my hands. Rich, what do you reckon? Rich! Oi! Oi! Mate! Well, once Dick had swiped the muck off his chops, he soon came round to the idea of building a tank. Our genius idea to build a tank based on Da Vinci's designs. Our challenge? To test its mobility, its firepower, and its protection. Our problem? We hadn't a clue where to start. <laughs> What we did know was that Da Vinci's design was a wooden shell on wheels. There were no engines back then, so it would have been driven by men turning wheels by hand. Oh, sounds like hard work. He also wanted to fit cannons, so it would have been seriously heavy. To help us build our version of Da Vinci's tank, we've enlisted a genius helper, engineer extraordinaire Grant Cooper. 
So we're trying to stay as true as we can to Da Vinci's uh, designs, Grant, but we, we want to dick and domify it a bit, you know, make it a bit more fun. What do you reckon? My main concern is that they're using humans to literally turn those wheels um, by hand, and I think that's going to cause us a few problems over rough terrain. I, so I suppose as well, to do that kind of thing, you need some people with a lot of muscle behind them. That's not us. Wheel. No. Ah, so what's your solution instead of kind of hand-powered wheels? Well, I think a much more efficient method is using normal off-the-shelf bicycles. Uh, if we put a couple of those in, uh, one of each of you riding those, and uh, I think that's the best way for that. OK. Right, OK. We'll and we can't put proper cannons on top for firepower, so have you got any ideas for that instead? Well, the whole principle of this is to test that you can aim and shoot a target um, quite easily, so I think if we go with something like paintball guns... Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, never done paintball, have Yeah, no, I like your style. That's great. So that's that's two boxes ticked. Um, the last one is um, the, the armoury side of it uh, and the general kind of shape of the outside design. What do you think? Well, that's one of the really good points about this uh, this original design, um, and I think we should just leave that alone. So, with the designs taking shape, we wasted no time getting to work. First up, rolling round on the floor like pigs. Our first task was to get wood to fit around a steel structure that Grant and his trusty helper had assembled. Now, we're not really used to hard work, so with the tank taking shape, we had a little break. <laughs> but not for long. We needed to get the bikes. Right. Right. Aye! Now, although our budget didn't stretch to caterpillar tracks, by fixing our bikes to each other at a reasonable width know, apart, we were confident our tank would be mobile. There was no doubt in our minds that our tank was going to be a huge success. But it has to be said that not every invention turns out quite so well. It's time for the not-so-genius idea! Imagine a tank that looks like an old-fashioned penny farthing. Well, imagine no more, because in 1915, the Russians built it, and it's called the Tsar Tank. It was massive! Nearly twice the size of a double-decker bus, and designed to crush anything in its path. Unfortunately, it turned out to be possibly the worst tank ever. It was so heavy that during early tests, the wheels got bogged down in a muddy hole and it couldn't get out. And so it remained there, rusting in a field for the rest of the war, never quite making it to the battlefield. So there you have it, the not-so-genius Tsar tank. So that's how not to do it. But how had we got on with our Dick and Dom Da Vinci tank? Well, the moment had arrived. Screws had been tightened, tyres had been pumped, and we were finally ready to show the world our Da Vinci tank! After a while, we got the hang of it, and so we took to the road for a cruise. It's not easy, is it? No. Watch out. Coming through. Look, get flying with our wings! It was all going so well. Until... Ah! Right. Oh, dear. Well, the one thing we've got to try and... <coughs> Get it to work a bit better is the brakes. Yeah, and the steering. Got to work out how to steer. Yeah. Right. Otherwise, apart from that, yeah. it's a flipping success. It's all good. It's amazing. Brilliant. The next step is to get the paint cannons and then put it into battle. But first, let's remove it from this hedge. <laughs> Actually, how did we get out? So, the time had come to test our version of Da Vinci's tank. We'd be testing its mobility its firepower and its protection. We felt pretty confident. We felt like the spirit of Da Vinci was running through our veins. We felt that... Get on with it, lads! Right then, so our first task is uh, mobility. We're going to try and get Da Vinci's tank uh, around this track. Yeah, yeah, but this is not any old track. This is going to be like a battlefield. Look, the ground is lumpy. And bumpy, yeah. yes. And it's also raining as well, so soon it's going to be really muddy as well. It's sticky. It's nice. going to be harder than the car park. Yeah, nice. Things started off surprisingly well. Right, we're That's it. Right. So we'll stop there. Here we go. We've got to try and get round the whole, whole course. 
without any any problems. It was definitely harder on this surface, but it was surely easier than turning the wheels by hand like in Da Vinci's plans. It has to be said that the tank suspension could have been a, a little bit better. The seat's not very comfortable either. Oh, man. This is really hard. Oh, here we go. Yeah, ditch. Uh, oh, man. Oh, no. Stuck. Look, we're stuck. See? Wedged right in. Wedged. So, this tank needed pedal power. Where's Sir Bradley of Wiggins when you need him? Oh, God! To make matters worse, we were about to encounter a highly technical, very complex mechanical failure. Chains come off! Chains come off! <laughs> Chains come off. On oh. the battlefields, you can't call in a mechanic. No. Whoever's in the tank has to fix it. Imagine there's a big man with an axe coming yeah. towards us. <laughs> with the chain back on, the challenge continued. The one thing that's a problem is... Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, dear. Look, we're literally... Oh, right look at that. I think it's actually stuck. Well, I don't really know what we can do now, cos the chain <coughs> won't stay on. And look, my bike's totally stuck. So, uh, I think that's the end of the test. Y your side's not looking good. Yeah, yeah. I think um, mobility, potentially a fail. So, unfortunately, we hadn't managed to improve Da Vinci's designs when it came to mobility. Yeah, sorry, Leo. I think we move on to the next one. Yeah. Yeah. We've got to get this out of here first. Any proper men around that can help us. One of the most important things about a tank is firepower. On Da Vinci's tank design, he had cannons. We have paintball guns. What do you think Da Vinci would have made of these? I think you would have called them bad boys. <laughs> yeah. That's what I think. Yeah. Paint goes in there, paint balls. Defo. Come out here. With some immense power. Yeah. Our challenge was to hit each target three times in under 60 seconds. Simple enough? Well, maybe not. The guns were fixed tight and aiming at the different targets was going to be tricky. So Don was going to be in charge of rotating the tank so that I could aim at the correct target. Three, two, one, go! Oh. Run it, right a bit. Down, down, come on. Have you got him? No. Come on, hold on. Got one, two, three, thanks. Okay, next, moving on to the next gun. Ah! Stay there. Got it. Done, next, break. Right, back a bit. Right, no, 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 right, 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 right. You got it? Right, right, right. Gone right through it. Bullseye as well. Ouch. I'm very impressed, Mr. McCure. Yes. Yeah? Well, it was teamwork, wasn't it? Because we had to keep moving the uh, tank around to get yeah. to the right position. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the thing is, it had its problems in that the, the holes where the, the guns are uh, were a little bit too narrow, so you couldn't actually maneuver them around very well. Um, but, you know, when you work as a team, you actually get it sorted out. I think Da Vinci would be quite pleased with that. I think he would. It's a good job. Right out the other side. Yeah. So, things were looking up. Done mobility, done firepower, protection's the only thing left. Yeah, all right, well, there's, well, we'll get in there. You go in first, I'll join you in a minute, all right? All right. Yeah, go in there. Come on. Come on, Chase. You, you in? Yep. Yeah. Oh, what's that? Oh! We're under fire! One last one, ready? <laughs> you all right there? Uh, is it finished? Yeah, yeah, run out of tomatoes. You what? Run out of tomatoes. Yeah. Oi! OK, we know what you're thinking. Even Granny's mobility scooter could withstand some manky tomatoes. We were about to have a nasty surprise, though. Or at least our tank's armour was. What's that noise? Hey, Winnie. We're his grace, the Duke of York's retinue. Don't be so silly. What's your real name? Oh, Dave. Right, well, listen up, you silly men. If a medieval army had seen this tank in Da Vinci's day, what would they have thought of it, do you think? They'd have been scared to death and run for the hills, I expect. Yeah. Oh. 
So, I mean, what would an army like you do with weapons like that to someone like this? Well, if we were brave enough to stand and fight, we'd smash it to bits. Right, off you go, then. Oh, oh, Gotta get out, get haven't out. we? Silly men. Silly men. <sighs> what are they like? They look ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> right, lads, give it all Shut we got! <laughs> Silly men. <laughs> what have you done? Uh, carried out orders, sir. Yeah, you absolutely yeah. mashed it! <laughs> oh. That's the whole front gun, then. It's a good job we weren't inside. Yeah, yeah, I think, uh, you know, if this was in the middle of one of your wars and there were people inside it, they wouldn't last long, would they? Right, back to your castle. See you later, lads. Come on, lads. So, Dave and his merry men had smashed up our tank, then left us to explain the mess to Grant. But they weren't finished yet. Arrows were something that Da Vinci's tank would certainly have had to fend off back in his day. So it would be interesting to see how it fared. Although the odd one stuck, most bounced off, which is down to Da Vinci's designs. The sloping armour really worked. People being that close to the tank and smashing it to bits, it didn't withstand that at all, did it? But people would never have got that close to the tank anyway in real life, would they? No, exactly. So, uh, overall, I think it's done a pretty good job. Mm. Good armour. Yeah, it was. And the tank had withstood the tomatoes and the arrows. OK, not the assault. But two out of three ain't bad, so in our books, that's a pass! Well, it's the end of our tank experience. And to be fair, I think, I think Da Vinci's tank fared pretty well. I know we got the, the front smashed in towards the end, but uh, that wasn't the point. The point was to find out what an amazing inventor he actually was. And not only that, we also found out that he was a great artist, scientist and an engineer. So, Da Vinci, we can most definitely say you were an absolute genius. Grazie de candom. Right, go on, saddle up. Time to get back to London. Yeah. Oh. Hey. I wonder how this tank would fare against a modern-day tank. Well, don't matter, does it? We're never going to find out. Quick, pedal! I can't! The chain's come off again! 